CataractCoach.com. We're going to see your resident doing FACO chop with double camera angles, the microscope view and the internal view. We're starting off making a paracentesis there. This is topical anesthesia. It will be some intercameral as well. You saw the resident use his finger to stabilize the eye while using the paracentesis blade. You can do that, just be careful. Here comes the intercameral anesthetic. Usually this is preservative free lidocaine, cut 50-50 with balanced salt solution. And that goes inside the eye. That'll cause about 10 seconds of stinging or burning for the patient, but then it gives a very good level of anesthesia. Here's a dispersive viscoelastic. Notice how a little bit was put there on the drapes just to make sure there's no air bubble. A good fill going across the eye, and here's the back fill, deepening the AC, that looks great. He used his finger there to check the IOP. I don't usually use a finger in ophthalmology and cataract surgery, but that's okay. Here comes the main incision. Now the surgeon's left hand with the fixation ring is blocking the side view, so we just see the microscope view here. And here comes the blade, the keratome, and we're getting an appropriate angle. Let's see the tunnel length. It's pretty good. It's a little bit out of focus because the surgeon's pushing the globe into the orbit. That incision looks very good. Now we're showing you the whole case here. This video is 15 minutes long. If you don't want to see the whole case, then don't watch it. But there's a lot to be learned by watching an unedited video of a resident doing phaco chop. Now the resident's first going to start off with cystome and says, you know what? No. Let's advance to just using forceps. You've seen me in my videos. I use just forceps. This resident's going to do the same. You open the forceps, poke in with just the right prong, and now close it and just start the thoraxis. If you poke in with one and close the tips, by definition, you're grabbing the capsule. And here you can see that worked out very well. So there is no need for a cystotome. And I do like that this surgeon has advanced beyond that. Now this resin's done about 150 cases so far. So skill set's pretty good. Look how the pivoting goes in that incision. So nicely pivoting in the incision. Notice not hitting the sides of the incision. Very little loss of viscoelastic. Nice, good capsorexis. Very well centered, good sized. Very nice technique here. And finishing that up, and that's gonna be just about a perfect five millimeter capsorexis. Very nice. Now hydrodissection is a step where a lot of residents have some difficulty. And here the key is slow and steady getting it in the right position, slow and steady, and getting a, fl a few fluid waves to go across the backside of the lens. And here we see a little bit better. And I'm gonna keep going to get a really good fluid wave. That looks pretty good. Tap the center of the nucleus, and you can see, does this rotate? Look at the angle, how the cannula is being pushed downwards. That's a great angle. Watch that again if you missed it. Putting the cannula like that is a really great angle in order to achieve the rotation because you're near the periphery of the lens nucleus, so you need less force. If you're very close to the center of the lens nucleus, you need a lot more force. Now the resident's preparing the FACO tip, and we're using a new scrub tech who's helping us, and she has a little bit of learning to do here, which is okay. She's helping us out, so now here's adjusting of the tip, putting that inside the eye. Here comes the chopper, and let's see the chop technique here. So I'm gonna buzz in, place the chopper. I like the chopper placement. Faco probe going there sub-incisionally, bringing the two instruments together and now apart. That's really good. Nice complete separation of the two halves. This resin did a beautiful job on the Faco chop. So cleaning up a little bit more of that anterior cortex to improve the view and not quite ready for the second chop. Try that again. Chopper placement looks pretty good. Be careful of the capsorexis edge. And that looks good. And let's see if we can get a little chop there. And that's pretty reasonable. There it is. That's a nice chop. So remember, the key in FACO chop is you have a finite period of time. You have a finite window in which to accomplish that chop. And that's because you have only a certain amount of time where you have the holding power, where the high vacuum of the FACO probe is going to be enough to hold the nucleus. Because this is not a very dense nucleus. So if you have that 500 millimeters of mercury actively holding a piece and you hear that the vacuum pitch is very high, well, that's only going to last a second or two before that high vacuum starts to break apart that nucleus and you lose the grip, you lose the holding power. So you have to be able to chop it within that finite window.
Notice how the eye stays in primary. This resin is doing a great job of keeping that eye in primary. Rotating the nucleus here a little bit, using just vacuum, trying to bring that piece up. And then again, let's make sure the pieces are fully separated. That does look pretty good. And then using vacuum, just grabbing the pieces. And again, being very careful and respectful of the capsulorexis edge when you're going in here. And then also don't go through these pieces. If you buzz through these pieces, you can hit the posterior capsule. So rotating around to a thicker piece of nucleus, I like that maneuver. And this should be a lot easier to get, this quadrant, and another chop if you need to, because this nucleus is a little thicker. So there's another chop, and that piece will come up. So doing a great job. So 150 cases in, this resident is doing great. Well on his way to being a master cataract surgeon. I figure by about case 1000, this resident will be fantastic. So at 150, this resin's about a standard deviation above the mean in terms of skill set. And there we go, finishing this up. There are the last little bits of nucleus that are remaining. And then Faco probe very carefully buzzing these. Look at the position of the chopper, the left-hand chopper. How that smooth back end of it is uh, facing the posterior capsule, just as a margin of safety in case the capsule comes up with some surge there's some protection. Last little tiny bits of nucleus material can be removed here. There's the little last piece. Again, careful using the chopper there as a barrier, just in case to keep the poster caps away. Get the instruments out of the eye, that looks great. Time for cortex removal. Doing well. So you see there's a tiny bit of chemosis there. That paracentesis on the superior aspect has caused a little bit of ballooning in the superior conjunctiva. Of course, that's of no consequence. And you also notice that the draping is excellent. Look at the draping. All lashes are out of the way. The lid margin has been sequestered away from your operating field. Nice, good red reflex, good corneal reflex. There's no oil or tear film debris. Looks great. Here's the cortex removal using a, a bimanual uh, handpiece that is now in coaxial mode. So this is actually that transformer handpiece. And if need be, this can be split apart by the resident. But here doing it primarily in a coaxial mode. So cleaning up the cortex nice and gently. Again, when you do this, you're also looking at the edge of the capsulorexis. You want to make sure that that capsulorexis is not moving. If it moves, of course, that's a sign of bad or broken or weak zonules. And here we go. Good cleanup there. Even that sub-incisional maybe won't even need the bimanual approach. And you can do a little capsule polishing, that under-service of the anterior capsular rim there. That's removing this less from the angle. And now it's looking pretty good. There's that capsular axis, aphakic state. Here comes the cohesive viscoelastic. You can go in through the main incision like this. Just have to be very careful to not distort the incision to keep the viscoelastic within the eye. The cohesive viscoelastic comes out in one big spurt. There's actually a little bit more dispersive on top that looks like the resident ran out of cohesive and you can see the difference between the two viscoelastic materials the dispersive will tend to stay worse place the cohesive tends to um, stay together as a lump but if you distort the incision it will burp out of the eye very quickly at this point the resident's loading the lens so in this program our residents they load their own lenses they need to learn how to do this so the resident's now away from the microscope loading up his own lens we're just going to wait in real time as he loads up his lens and then he's going to come back and he'll finish up his case here. So these lenses are single piece acrylic lens, hydrophobic and monofocal lens as well. And certainly you need to master the skill set of loading that. You can see in real time, it's very quick for him to load it. Certainly less than a minute, probably 30 seconds. Here comes the eye well. Injector tip is nicely placed in the eye. Watch how the lens goes inside nice and gently and then starting to pull the injector out. And the eye stayed in primary the whole time. Now the chopper going in here. There it is to deliver the lens completely in the capture bag. Make sure both haptics open up within the bag. Can center the lens, etc. That looks great. And now let's finish up the case here. Time for the, court, uh, the eye probe to remove the viscoelastic. So there it is, squirting the surface of the eye. Get all the viscoelastic out. 
Here the dispersal will be easy to move because it's within the confines of that big blob of cohesive. So rather than first rotating the lens here, it often is easy to rotate the lens when the lens is in the eye full of viscoelastic. And this rotation is going to allow the resin to position the haptics at the 12 and 6 o'clock uh, meridians. And then also it's going to be easier for the resin to go underneath the eye well to remove viscoelastic. So here we go, underneath the eye well. If you've only done 100 cases or less, it's okay if you don't go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic. But if you've done 100 cases, you need to learn to master this technique. If you're doing a toric lens, which this is not, but if you are doing a toric lens, it's very important to remove all that viscoelastic in order to have the eye well directly against the posterior capsule. So learning this technique, as this resin is done here, is important. You definitely want to remove all viscoelastic in these cases. Centering up the lens there, you can see it's a really nice overlap of that optic by the capsular axis for 360 degrees. This is a great case. And a little bit of polishing of the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim was done. That looks pretty darn good. And now sealing up the incisions here. I'm going to call this case over very soon. So a little hydration there. There's a little air bubble in this cannula that the nurse gave us. That's okay. We'll do a little hydration. These bubbles, as we know, will be gone in a matter of hours. They're of no consequence. Good sealing of the incision. Nice, gentle hydration on the roof, back and forth. Now I can go through the paracentesis, center up the lens, get the lens position exactly where it's desired. Also get the IOP dialed in exactly. So here's the lens. Let's get that pushed a little bit more in fear. There you go. That looks like a good centration here. And then we can seal the incision here. Again, not worried about those air bubbles. Those are going to be resolved very soon on their own. A little bit more balanced salt solution, perhaps adjust the lens position just a little bit more. This lens material, this um, acrylic tends to be a little tacky. So it tends to stick to the capsule wherever you place it. So really spend the extra time like this resin's doing and get a really nice centration there, a good overlap by the rexes. That looks fantastic. Just checking the pressure, getting it to a nice normal state. And in this case, I've requested that the resin place a suture as well. So the incision sealed up beautifully. There's no issue there. But I think for maximum resident benefit, and even for the safety of this patient, placing a suture doesn't hurt. And so in practice, once you've done hundreds or even a thousand cataracts, you'll be able to make a consistent incision that won't ever require suture. And this incision is great, and maybe suture is absolutely not required, but it's a good technique here to practice, certainly when you're a resident, and it's a little bit added margin of safety for this patient who we uh, worry about a little bit more in the post-op period. So there's the suture. Notice how it's being turned like a screwdriver. Circular needles are turned. That is perfect. Straight needles are pushed. Do not push a curved needle. Pulling that through, notice how the anterior chamber did not deflate. That was placed very well. Now the metal needles in the needle holder, or it will soon be, pulling this through, getting the appropriate short enough length, and then the resin's gonna cut the suture and give the needle back. Very important that we not lose that needle. So pulling this through, this looks good, getting the small scissors here and cutting that suture off. And so here we go, suture material. It's going to be cut, and then the suture is going to be given back to, there it is, given back to our, our scrub tech. Now to tie this to tying forceps, again, this is shown in real time. You should definitely be able to throw a suture just like this. This is a skill set that is learned in the laboratory. It's not a skill set that anyone was born with. So here are the two ends. So pulling the end closest to the surgeon, so it's a little longer, shortening up the one of the cornea. There it is, getting the three loops. The short end is already floating in the air, easy to grab. There it is. Right hand to you, left hand to patient's nose, because we're seeing temporally. Here comes the second throw, 90 degrees difference, and then check the tension on that. That looks beautiful. And here comes the final throw. Looks great. Cut this and rotate it, and we'll be done with the case soon. So beautiful case. I encourage you to check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. We can feature a video of you operating as well. Send the video. We'll edit it. We'll do the voiceover. It'll be a great learning experience for everyone. And if it's a complication, 
Don't worry, we'll keep it anonymous.